look, I, I know you've already, you've, you've been talking about this a little bit. I know you have a lot of agents that are, are paying attention to what you're saying. What, what are you telling them right now? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the the lawsuit know, doesn't just, matter. I, yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. Like the, yeah, the, the, this isn't the first time this has happened, man. Um, you know, when uh, Zillow came out, they said it was going to take our jobs. When for sale by owner.com came out, they said it was going to take our jobs. Um, you know, they've been saying AI was going to take our jobs for, uh, for years now. Um, you know, uh, Amazon did a deal with Realogy back in the day, like six or seven or eight years ago. And, uh, people said Amazon was going to get in the real estate business and take our job. Um, you know, social media, it, they, it, it dude, I, I've been in the big game for over two decades. I still get the same exact commission rate I did from the moment I got in the business, you know, five or 6%. And honestly, I still take just about as many 6% deals as I do, uh, 5%. Um, so, you know, are, is there some downward pressure on commission? Sure. I mean, especially in the way the market is with it being so, um, <clears throat> you know, um, such a seller's market, you know, they can kind of name their price and there's uh, abundance of agents that are willing to do it for cheaper and there's discount brokers and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, what's interesting is that, um, people in today's market, consumers, they have more information than they've ever had. It's an all, all time high. Um, they know, uh, honestly, and th th this, you know, I don't know how many agents will like me saying this, but that our consumers know more about these homes than we do. And the reason is, is because they went deep on that one specific home or that one specific neighborhood when we're more, you know, a shotgun approach, you know, we're paying attention to the whole market and we can't remember the finer details, you know, as they can when they're going deeper on that specific thing. But the point is, is that consumers have, are at an all time high with the amount of information they know uh, with history and comps and prices. And, you know, they can Google a contract. They can Google a contract and write up a contract. Um, everything's at their fingertips, right? And we're at an all time high with consumer information. But you know, what we're also at an all time high at is the amount of the percentage of buyers and sellers who choose by choice to use a real estate agent. And, you know, forever people are like, well, the more information people have, you know, it's like, we don't need agents because it's on Zillow. All the information is on Zillow. Well, it's a good thing that that's not what we're here for. People think we're here to just open doors and like, oh, find a buyer. No, no we're not. We're here to consult you through the contract to make sure that you're getting the best deal possible and to make that deal go smooth for you. AI is going to handle that at some point. Yeah, well, I'd love to see the barrage of lawsuits that pops up for the people that trust uh, AI, you know, to go in and, um, you know, handle like their life's decision on buying or selling a house. You know, uh, all these things have made all these technological advances and like fear in the industry of stuff happening. You know what it's all turned into? It's all turned into agents selling more property in less time. Whenever Zillow came out and everybody's like, oh, it's going to, I said, no, it's not. It's going to make things easier for me. I'm not going to have to search properties for buyers anymore. And I'm able to spend that time finding more listings. And I can go show the properties that my buyers actually find for me. Well, why are they going to need you? Because they need help con like navigating the deal and negotiating the price, something that they don't do uh, ever. Um, so when it comes to the NAR settlement, um, the fundamentals and, and uh, principles of, of real estate are just never going to change, right? What is our job as an agent? Our job as an agent is to expand influence in the market and connect buyers and sellers. I mean, I don't care what happens, bro. That 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 fundamental building block of you know building your real estate business and the real estate industry in general is just never going to change. Something else that's never going to change is the fact that closings are going to happen it, it, regardless of the headwinds uh, of the market and any kind of artificial fear uh, driven by what might happen. Right, regardless of all that, people are going to forever buy and sell homes every single day uh, in myriads. What's a myriad, you might ask? Well, it means unlimited. Every single yeah. day, unlimited, big number. Back in classic history, it, it was referred to as a, a 10,000 units. It's You can't do Now, I believe that over the next decade, we're going to have a year where we hit 7 million existing home sales. Why do I think that, Curtis? Because we did it in 05. Right realize this they think 2021 was the boom year and the in the record of six million transactions sorry sorry guys 
but 05 was the record and it was 7 million. Can you, can you imagine if 2021 with a million more transactions in the country? Okay. That's where we're going to be. Why do I think that? Because we have the demographics behind it. We have the data behind it of the trade up seller who's dying to move, but they can't with the golden handcuffs. We've got first time home buyers. We've got the biggest group of first time home buyers that we've seen since the, um, the baby boomer generation. The amount of pent up demand is unprecedented. It's, 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 it, it's the, and, and the thing is, is that agents that are going to look at the NAR settlement and be like, um, it's, it's over, right? I'm going to stop expanding my influence. That's the exact opportunity because so many agents are backing away. It's leaving so much market share on the table for you to gobble up until the year that we have 7 million transactions in which will be the year that you become one of the number one agents in the world. Because what you listen to Ricky and you didn't worry about this NAR thing, which is literally just, I, I need to come up with a name for these like instances that come, that come about. Like the Zillow is going to take your job. AI is going to take your job. NAR is going to take, you know, NAR settlement is going to wipe you out. I need to come up with a name for those instances. This is just another one of those things. Now, the how-tos of real estate, of course it's going to change. Dude, when I got in the business, I'm freaking practicing contract. By the time I got the contract back, I had to get a magnifying glass. It was like this big on, on the paper, like the contract. Because yeah, like facts I, after facts, right? Facts yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it meant facts back and forth so many times. It shrinks it a little bit every time. I like had to get a magnifying glass to figure out if they put all the initials where they were supposed to put the initials. Um, you know, I mean, now I just do an electronic signature. Like the way that we do business will always be evolving. The principles of how to build a business will never change. Right. The way that we get paid might change. The way we disclose something may change. The way we advertise a buyer agent commission may change. Might we have to get the buyer to pay our commission? Sure. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. If, if you're crying about this, you know, maybe you should take up darts. Right. <laughs> well, two things I, you know, one is, is this, everything you said in the beginning, it reminds me of, of, of some articles that I read about the upcoming generations and everybody says they're so technologically savvy. Right. And they want to be on computers. They don't answer their phone. They only communicate through text and they only and, and all these things. And and again, it's another one of these things that people are going, oh, no, when when they become the the primary home buying and selling demographic, we're screwed. Right? They said that about the, the millennials when they weren't buying. And now millennials are, are creeping up as one of the bigger uh, buying demographics and selling demographics. And they're saying that about Gen Z. But but the article went into what you don't know about these these generations is more than ever when there's something highly emotional they want human interaction and human intervention they they yeah. they don't want a computer at that point they want the computer to validate and supplement they want the ai to validate and supplement what the human professional is doing as they walk them through this emotional experience yeah. and and i think the buying and selling of what will be most people's greatest asset in their whole life is an emotional experience, right? Mm -hmm. And and well, and so there's going to be a need for for us to step into that experience and and grab them by the hand and lead them to where they need to be, and and so that they feel good about their decisions and the outcome. Um, and uh, and then and well, as far we, as what we feel like that's a reality, right? You yeah. know, and we're, we're biased. Okay. We're in the real estate business. So we're, we're biased to it. Right. So like, Oh yeah, you're in the business. Of course you're going to say that. Let me make something crystal clear. I don't care if real estate agents go away. I don't care if the whole business goes up in flames, which it won't. I don't, but I don't care if it does. See, that's the difference in me and everybody else. <clears throat> I don't care about all that. Why? Well, that's easy for you to say, Ricky, you're a coach now and you have investment properties and you this the skills that you develop as a new agent to build a business can be taken into any industry. And if AI takes agents out, there will be different industries that we can't even fathom right now that you can use those skills to go not only crush it, not only crush it, but I'm talking about to the moon. I'm talking about 10 million a year, 20 million a year type stuff, right? That I, you, no one can take away what's in here. Right. 
And so you can go, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to go all in because, you know, what if the the business doesn't even exist in two years or five years or whatever? And I'm like, you're going to hold back from personally, from developing into the type of person that can actually crush. It's like this, Curtis. People switch careers. Like I see real estate agents and I'll see their profile on on uh, Facebook and it'll be like, just open up an insurance company. It's literally like this virtual thing. They just like, now they're like some insurance agent all of a sudden. And um, like, you know, my wife showed me this. She showed me, she showed me somebody that we know and she's like, aren't you excited? And I was like, she's like, you're not saying anything. And I was like, but here's why. Because they haven't mastered this over here yet. Like if, if they would, if they would master this over here, right. And know how to build a business, then I'd be happy that they're going to master another business, but they hadn't done anything over here in this arena. So they're switching arenas, not because they know how to go build a business, but because they, they, they're looking for the shiny penny thinking something's going to like explode for them when they won't take the time to develop into the person who can actually build any business. Right. I don't care if agents go away. So I mean, so, I'll take all I'll take all the agents and go help them, go coach them to whatever the next whatever the next thing is. Right. But it's all the same principles. Well, and I and I think and if if that's inevitable, that that's you know, like you said, I don't think that's what's happening. I think there's a, a great wave and opportunity right now, and oh. I love the idea of like you got to master the business now. Let's just spend, we got like four minutes left. Let's talk about, you know, give one or two or maybe three things that people can do right now to master a business that will one, give them confidence in in a time that of how they are going to do things may be uncertain to a lot of people. They still haven't figured out how they're going to shift. There's a lot of talk of, oh man, should I just shift to a listing agent and list to last and maybe don't work with buyers or am I going to change my scripts and that? In this uncertainty, what are the top one to three things that people should be doing right now? Okay. Number one, stop thinking about what you might should do because something might happen in the future. Number one, the first thing, stop thinking, oh, should I be a listing agent? Buyer agents aren't going to, buyer's agents are going to be around. And guess what? They're going to be incredibly valuable. Here's what's going to happen, in my opinion. When this happens, the shockwave through the industry, through, 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 through the consumer, part of the industry is going to be, well, I never had to pay for the agent before. So, you know, I'm not going to pay now. I'll just go right to the listing agent. Okay. And I think that you'll, let's just say 20 or 30% of buyers will still pay their buyer. Like this is if, this is if uh, buyers pay their own commission. This isn't even like happening yet. Like who knows what'll happen. I'm just saying like, if, if buyers have to pay their own agent, let's just say if hypothetical, weird, crazy world, futuristic world that doesn't exist right now, right? In that world, buyers pay their own agent. And if that happens and there's a shock wave, I think 20 to 30 percent of uh, buyers will still pay their agent in that world. OK, I also think there's a lot of sellers that are going to keep paying the buyer agent fee through concessions. But. Let's just say, let's just keep it on the buyers. So the buy, 20, 30% of buyers pay their agent. And then you got 30, 70, 80% who don't. Why? Because the shock wave. And they're like, oh, I'll just go check. It's only going to take two to three to four years for that stat to completely reverse to where 70 uh, to 80% are paying for the buyer agent, right? All, this is the biggest social experiment that we're fixing to see like the craziest thing in the world happen when all these buyers <coughs> say, oh, I don't need an agent. Right. I can find my own property on Zillow. Thank you very much. And they go to try to do this on their own. Right. And guess what's going to happen in in two to three to four years when they go to sell that property? They're going to come running back to us. They're going to list that property with us. They're probably going to pay the buyer agent fee right through concessions based on their experience. Right. And nevertheless, they're going to pay us on the back end to represent them when they buy their next house. Um, I, so I think that's a possibility, like, you know, shockwave and then let them go try it on their own for a while. Wish them luck. Congratulations. And let them come running back to you in a couple of years. But number one, none of this has happened yet. So why in the world even talk about it? Well, I got to prepare for it. Here's how you prepare. Here's the second thing. Expand your influence in the market, which means talking to more people in the marketplace, letting them know who you are, what you do, and you're here to help. 
followed by whatever your system is to stay in touch forever to make sure they never forget who you are so they call you when it's time to buy or sell. That's all you should be focused on to the moon. To the moon. And the third thing is, why don't you guys start reading a little bit of books? Right? It, it'd be like a lot of people are like, no, no. A lot of people are like, Ricky, uh, you know, you know, I'm having problems with this. And I'm like, okay, how many books have you read on that subject? And they're like, none. I'm like, that's not a good number. No, that's no, not a good number. Be, because I can get all the education I want from headlines in Instagram. Right. I mean, when you start, he, listen to me, here's here's why people don't read, because they think that the actual manual labor is what's going to help them get to their quantum leap. OK, it's not going to get them to their quantum leap. The quantum leap lies within the knowledge that, you know, and, and the way that you articulate it to the world. It's not in you trying harder at things that aren't producing a quantum leap. OK, and so. Everybody wants to like hit this big thing, but but you, they're too lazy mentally. See, they're 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 covering up the fact that they don't want their brain to sweat by going and making their body sweat, and they're doing all this physical labor with like making the calls and showing the property and following up with people and doing the emails and making the videos, and that's all great. That's all fine and dandy. But if you're not taking time to develop into the person, you want to make a million bucks a year. You want to make two million. You want to make three million. But if you're not developing into the person who has the ability and the, and then the wherewithal and the, the know-how to go out and actually execute on the things that actually create the quantum leaps to get there, you're not going to get there. And let me tell you something. When you read every day, you communicate better. You articulate better. People trust you more because. You know, like it, it bleeds into every little thing that you do. Um, here, here's, here's something I was thinking about. Like it's foolish to execute today on things you already know. And what I mean by that is every day when you wake up, you should be, you should have this curiosity to like read to try to to try to pick something up in a book that you can you can utilize that day when you're executing on whatever your business is right where every day you're learning a little something new you're molding your business everything's kind of like um you know growing in terms of your efficiency in terms of exactly what you're doing in terms, you know, like 80% of your, 20% of your actions will create 80% of your results. It's like, where's that 80% at that doesn't do anything for me? And how do I get rid of it? I'll tell you how. Read books. And so <clears throat> that's three things, man. Quit worrying about it. I love it. it. Let, let's end go with all this. In on, go all huh. in on expanding your influence. Okay. Don't worry about it. Go all in with blinders on expanding your influence and read books. Right. And your and your top three book recommendations. Oh my gosh. Oh well, I've always said the slight edge, 10 X rule, shift by Gary Keller. Those have always been like my faves for like uh, you know, throughout my whole coaching career and everything. Yeah. But um The Agent's Edge by Jordan Cohen, you know, number one Remax agent in the world multiple times. He wrote a book about his listing presentation. Oh my God. Um, you know, that's a must read. I, I, I'm, I'm creating this massive library over here. Let me see what another one is that, uh, <coughs> that I've read recently that, that I think would help. Uh, I've been reading a lot. There's a book. There's a really short book. Oh, there's one called U Squared. U Squared. Okay, I'm going to leave it with that. That one will blow your mind. It's a 36-page book. That's a good place for people to start that aren't reading right now. Absolutely. I-35 with a top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me.